The Chicago Bulls got themselves a victory last night over the Cleveland Cavaliers for preseason game one. There's a lot of things that we can take away from that game. Some good, some bad. But one of the most important things of it all, I got to let everybody know. Matus Buzelis is going to be a problem. Y'all know we're going to talk about it and break it down. But you know, you got to hear the music first. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Gang. Yeah. Shy Bulls Podcast with the Cognac Boys. I'm Cognac Boy Bobby, and I'm holding it down on today's daily episode. For my new people that's just joining, Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For my people that are returning, welcome back. Let's go ahead and get into it. The Chicago Bulls last night, if you missed it or if you had to catch up, hey, these guys won themselves a, a basketball game. Granted, it is preseason, you know what I'm saying, but they won themselves a basketball game. While that game was going on, we found out that the Chicago Bulls, re is they're planning to re-sign Somebody that was with the squad a while ago made some noise up in the, the, the summer league, and we thought he was going to be getting a contract, and he got up out of here. And Javon Freeman Liberty, he's going to be making his return to Chicago. Um, They got to work out some stuff that's going over there uh, in Turkey, and then he should be making his way back over here to have some type of part within Chicago. We found out that Lonzo Ball, he was out for the yesterday's game, but he should be. You know what I'm saying? Seeing some action in the foreseeable future. And while watching the Chicago Bulls take on the Cleveland Cavaliers, man, was I would say that with the way we started the game, it was a head scratcher. Not even going to lie to you. I'm like, golly, these guys can't hit nothing. Can't hit the backside of a barn, C-Dub said a couple times during the live call. But then guys started to get it going. You know what I'm saying? One of the good things that we take from yesterday's game is Ayo Dosumu. My man's came out there handling business. You know what I'm saying? And then to, then insert the young rookie. He's going to be a problem. Montabu Zellis is going to be a problem. So a lot of us is going to feel like there's going to be a lot of overreaction over one game. And you're absolutely right. I'm going to try to take it a little slow. But I ain't going to jump off the board, hopefully. But I am here to say this. Montabu Zellis had a great start. Just by playing only one game with 21 minutes in a game. I say he's going to be a problem because if you can develop this young player with everything that we've seen that he's capable of, just, you know what I'm saying, traveling through G League, playing in the summer league, you know what I'm saying, and now to the NBA, obviously there's going to be some challenges for this young player. But if the development is there, he's going to be a problem. He was a problem yesterday, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it wasn't like a major problem, you know what I'm saying, to where you're going to say he's on another guy, you know, like an Anthony Edwards type of level or something like that. But, man, the moment he gets on the floor, his talent is oozing off of the screen because you like, bro, oh, he this damn big, he able to move his feet like that? Oh, that's a block shot. Oh, my man is sitting right there. He's creating for others while moving, you know what I'm saying, in transition and trying to open things up for the other guys around now, he's going to be a problem. Another reason he's going to be a problem because, look, this is why I said I'm, is, I'm trying not to make it sound like an overreaction because if Patrick Williams don't string, you know what I'm saying, don't string together some games, it's going to be real. Uh, it's going to be real tense in the locker room. I'm just saying that. No, I ain't, ain't going to say guys go want to fight like that. But at some point, if Mazda Buzelis is coming in off the bench and P. Will is not giving, a, giving you the production that you think that he can give you, Mazda Buzelis is going to be sitting right behind him and there's going to be a lot of people calling for him to start. It's going to be a lot of people calling for him to start. Now, we I'm not going to jump off the porch and just totally kill P. Will for his performance yesterday because it is preseason. He hasn't played a game of basketball in months. You know what I'm saying? Because we, you remember, he did go down with the injury. So we do have to be considerate in that. And it is the first game of preseason. So we will allow him some time. But I'm telling you, 
<laughs> I believe at one point it was about, you know what I'm saying? You was going to look at P. Will and say, hey, the first 20 games with Montez Boo's elephant, if he's continuing to move up and continuing to show the Chicago Bulls more, it's going to be very, very interesting to not talk about it. And I'm pretty sure with some of the guys that surround the media in the YouTube world, including myself, is going to be talking about it. While the games are going on, hey, Billy Donovan, P. Will don't want to shoot no more. Hey, Billy Donovan, P. Will don't want to be aggressive right now. We're going to be calling those moments out. And this young player right there, he's just going to keep adding on to it. And if he continues to add on to it, now you got a different conversation about, hey, is this potentially one of the best players you got on the squad right now already? I'm just saying. We get, the guy has all the everything that you're looking for. The handle is there already. We got to touch up on that three-point shot, but the moves is there. The talent is there. The mentality is there. He got some things that you ain't going to be able to coach in certain players. That's why I say you got to keep your eyes on Montez Buzelis. So solid first game for him. You know what I'm saying? It is not the end all be all. Let's make it clear. Montez Buzelis, though I believe he's going to be a problem, I'm basing this off. This is going to have to be a continual progression of him becoming this problem. You know what I'm saying? Because I believe right now it's all the, the thought is already inserted, at least in some of our minds, like, hey, keep out, keep your eyes on this young guy. You know what I'm saying? The thought is already there. He continues to play better. The thoughts go up. The, the, the questions start to arise a little bit more often. You know what I'm saying? So that's what's going to be interesting. And on top of Montez Buzelis, I got to show love from some other, other from some of the other takeaways from yesterday's game. Again, we talked about Ayo Dosumu. My man's came right there, instant offense for the Chicago Bulls. Um, one thing I found very, very interesting, and one thing that I'm liking so far, you know what I'm saying, before I continue on with the players is, how interesting it is now to see that the Chicago Bulls, when they make substitutions, they are not losing a lot of size out there. And some of the, the, the combinations that Billy Donovan was drawing up, those combinations were really, really intriguing, at least in my mind. At one point, we seen Vooch, Zach Levine, Josh Giddy, P. Will, and Montes on the court at the same time. Then at another instance, we seen Kobe. Vooch, Giddy, P. Will, and Montes. Look how that, look how much youth, youthfulness is up in that. If we subtract Vooch from that starter lineup, insert Jalen Smith. Now we talking and we we getting this thing rolling a little bit. You know what I'm saying? One of the other lineups that I thought was really, really crazy. I'm like, hey, it, I like it's, it's all right. You know what I'm saying? Bet. We seen Josh Getty with Dalen Terry, Julian Phillips, Kobe White, and Vooch. Again, the Vooch aspect of it is something that I'm going to pay attention to to see why Billy Donovan is constantly reverting to that. And um, we'll see how Jalen Smith can get, you know, more involved in that too. But I just wanted to mention that because I feel like those uh, lineups with those rotations is very, very intriguing. And because you're looking at one of the lineups, Vooch, that's your seven-footer, Zach Levine, 6'5", Getty, 6'8", P. Will, 6'7", Monster, 6'10". It's crazy, ain't it? Like, you ain't, you, it's a lot of size and versatility out there with those lineups. You know what I'm saying? So just keep y'all eyes on that. You know what I'm saying? But keep, when we going on with the players, I want to continue to talk about Kobe White. Kobe White, man, he was the, the, really, I know we talked a lot about Monsters, and I'm starting this whole thing without Monsters, but I would be remiss if I don't show love to Kobe White because my man's in just 25 minutes last night, scored 21 points, had three assists, three rounds, three rebounds, uh, three of seven from three, seven to 15 from the field. My man was the, bro, he, he, he came out. Kobe White looked like he about to be ready to go already. I ain't going to lie to you. And then the bad, Nick Vucevic in transition. Nick Vucevic just sticking defense. Nikola Vucevic on the defensive end, period, was just terrible. That's the bad. <laughs> Nikola Vucevic, y'all, was just, oh, it's just one of those things to where you're hoping that Jalen Smith gives you a little bit or shows Billy Donovan a little bit to where we believe that this could be a real competition for the center position. You know what I'm saying? I don't think 
Jalen Smith was 100% perfect, but I would say that he was definitely better on the defensive side than what I seen from Nikola Vucevic, for sure. Like uh, y'all, so y'all let me feel, let me know, and how, let me know how y'all feeling about that. It feel me in on defensive effort between the two bigs. I ain't saying either one. Um, I ain't saying Jalen Smith was perfect, but Nikola Vucevic, ugh, yeah. That was a tough one to watch. But it's just some things that the Chicago Bulls can build on, though, before we get up out of here. Um, one of the things I think that, the, on the, at least on the offensive side, I think that they still lacking some continuity, some chemistry or whatnot. Um, but there needs to be some emphasis on player movement. These are young guys. I understand that you're going you're gonna to some, allow sometimes to some two-man game to happen. But it's going to be some other times to where guys got to move around. You know what I'm saying? I think that. The starting five, I think the way that you get the best out of that group for the starting group that we saw yesterday in Josh Giddy, Kobe White, Zach Levine, P. Will, and Vooch, the best, the, the the way that you get the best out of them is to have some some of them moving around. Try to see if you can help Pat Williams become a slasher, or you you can help, you know, set some things up with Kobe White and then have him relocate to hit him in a corner on a three or something like that. Just try to you know, build some of that chemistry together. It's going to come together, but the offense was a little sloppy, but that was kind of expected for a team that's kind of just bringing it all back together. You know what I'm saying? Because P. Will, he spent time out. You know, he was out. Zach Levine was done for the season. And then Josh Giddy is the new addition. So it's like everybody's coming back trying to play with each other again. And then on the defensive side, I got to talk about the transition defense, bro. Ain't no way. And I think it starts with Nikola Vucevic. You know what I'm saying? You the big, you got to get your ass down there, and you one of the slowest guys on the thing. So you got to be running. You got to be running. But it's, 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 it's easier said than done with Nikola Vucevic, and I don't necessarily think that that's something that he's going to improve in right now at the sake of his career. So I'm interested, again, to see if Billy Donovan took into account that his younger center was able to get his big foot ass down there and help on the defensive side for the transition defense because the build, the Bulls were really, really getting killed in transition, and there was a lot of open threes that Darius Garland was jacking up, and he missed those. And then at one point, these guys, was they was acting like it was Showtime Lakers. Donovan Mitchell hit you with the uh, you know, the fake, and then pass. You know what I'm saying? Like it was – so, yeah, I don't want to see teams coming, coming at my team like that. So the Chicago Bulls need to fix that, and you know, we'll go from now. But that is it for me today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to another episode. Go ahead and leave your feedback, your comments, concerns down below. Let us know. If you want to be a part of the mailback episode that's taking place this weekend, call in, state your name, leave your take. 773-242-9219 is the number. Appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all always see red. Y'all already know. I'm going to catch y'all on the next one for sure. Cognac. Cognac. Gang.